She's going to dump it in here as though she's dumping in a chow mein, and then we can measure it. Howdy folks, I'm Martha and I welcome you to Hershberg's Miracle Homestead where the kitchen action is happening. We are making enough for a meal tonight and then enough for several meals. So we're doing a big pot of chicken chow mein. This is a dish that Dorothy often makes, but she is assisting Buddy, so I am doing it, and she's going to be on the sidelines coaching me. And what do we need for chicken chow mein? Of course, we'll need chicken and chicken broth. We don't have enough of the chicken broth left that we got from the chicken, so we'll finish off with store-bought, and soy sauce, onion, celery, and then we're doing an instant rice that the chow mein will be served over a bed of rice. Or you can put rice on top of the chow mein, whatever suits your fancy. And then also the chow mein noodles. So these we definitely won't need to we're ready to eat. The rice I will put back here. And I have water on the stove back here. I'm going to go and turn it on. And then when it's boiling, we'll put the instant rice to it. And I'll have my back to it, so I wish you could let me know when you see steam coming up, but I'll try to catch it. All right, let me get things shoved around here. First of all, I will get chicken broth over. We have enjoyed these three-quart jars. Someone was getting rid of them, and yeah, we'll take them, we'll take them so. I should say someone was getting rid of some of theirs. Okay, and now chicken broth here. I better double check me. This is chicken. Now get this up on the handy dandy hot plate that we have. Countertop hot plate. And I will turn this on high. The water is boiling, so... You know what? I'm just going to let this on the back counter. Because I have enough going on up there. Instant rice. And put the lid on. And guess what? We had to babysit the water to make sure it didn't get to boiling and evap evaporate away from me. But now that the rice is in here and the lid is on, we don't have to babysit anymore. It can sit there and do its thing while we're doing our thing. We will need to cut up the celery. And for some reason, this was an extra dirty stalk of celery. So it was washed good. I'm going to set the leafy part to the side, and then we'll chop that separately. One thing I like about this dish, it doesn't have to be chopped real little, real fine. Okay, we will put it in that container. I like this cutting board, but it doesn't bend. We have some cutting mats that bend and it's easy to pour into there. Okay, I, I did get another stalk of celery, and so we will get this one chopped up. I enjoy watching these shows where they are a whiz with a knife, and in no time they have their things cut up. But I have not got there. Something just went on the floor. All right, this is ready for this container. This is how Dorothy measures what she needs for the amount of chow mein we're making tonight. Now we'll set that aside and pull this up for the onion. By the way, a healthy snack. 
is taking a stalk of celery and putting peanut butter down the center and having peanut butter and celery that is good it's been a long time since I had that but working with it I just thought about it okay now it's time to cut up the onions not my most favorite thing in the world to do but we do what we gotta do right oh so do an experiment someone has said that whatever it is in the onion that makes your eyes burn is drawn to fluid that's why it's drawn to your eyes so if you put water beside you why then it'll save your eyes so I guess this is an experiment are my eyes going to be burning or not? Of course, some onions are affecting more than others, too. I will say that. Okay, there's one more here and then we'll cut this up and see what we have so now it is time to cut these up chicken broth is moving things are about to happen with a rolling boil so far so good with my eyes I can feel it just a little bit but it's not the chicken broth is boiling okay we're ready for the celery and the onions to go into the chicken broth we'll always put a few more onions in than celery but we're ready to put it in so see if I can do it without splashing myself and by the way my eyes they are burning just a little bit but it's not to the point that it brings tears like it does sometimes so I don't know if the water had anything to do with it or if it was just the milder onion. Okay. Celery. And onion. Whee! Okay, we'll give this a stir. We'll put the lid on. And this one is a glass lid that you can be able to see through. See what's going on if it's not steamed up too much when this comes back up to a boil we'll cook it for about 20 to 30 minutes before we proceed with the rest of it so while that's going on I can get the chicken cut up the kitchen is smelling good Dorothy dumps the soy sauce and you remember I said it's just a more of a dump thing so we're gonna, she's gonna dump it in here as though she's dumping in chow mein and then we can measure to see how much it is for this pot. <laughs> okay. Probably about like that. So that's, that's about a half a cup. Now so we can take a look at it, see what it looks like. Sometimes I go by the color too. Oh, I do a little more. Okay. <laughs> so it's about a fourth a cup. So about a three fourths cup for this. Yeah. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. Okay, I'll put the lid back on. While that comes back up to a boil, we will cut up our chicken. Before we add the chicken, we'll be taking some of that out and then let it cool down and we'll put it in the refrigerator you can even freeze it and then pull it out for another meal 
from what we'll have for a meal tonight, we'll give leftovers, but yeah. The countertop burner is definitely slower than the stove, but that's all right. I started early enough that we had time to do it over here, but yeah. All right, before we add the meat, I'm going to take some out, holding back of the broth, and then this will be, what, the freezer? Mm -hmm. And then we'll cool it down and package it for the freezer. And then it can be pulled out later for a meal. And then we can add more chicken broth to it and chicken. So so how much? So this will come in very handy to pull out of the freezer and add more chicken broth and chicken. And then we have another meal of chicken chow mein. We could have added chicken to it already and freeze it like that, but we have other plans for that chicken. Okay, chicken meat goes in next. Then bring this up to another boil and let the chicken meat get good and hot and I think we'll be about ready to eat. So good. What we need to do is make a thickening for it and we'll use cornstarch and water. And Dorothy's guiding me in this. And they're going to kind of measure because we don't have measurements down yet. So that's one, eight. And now how much water do you put to it? Just enough to dissolve it. Oh, probably a quarter cup. So, Think it'll take more than this? Yeah, you want you want a little bit more, probably another four tablespoons. Okay, so we're mixing up a little bit more. Let that come back up to another boil. Okay, it's back up to a boil, so we will cut it off. Fluff it up a little bit. Normally we just dish up out of the kettle, but we have to make it look a little pretty for the profile picture. So this is the instant rice that we made. Okay, so perfect. Here we have it folks, chicken chow mein over a bed of rice with the chow mein noodles. 
And I thank you for joining me in the kitchen today. And now I invite you to stay tuned for the Golden Thought. Hi, and I welcome you to the Golden Thought of this episode. I am Martha, and I'm here with our brother, my twin brother, Marvin, and he's better known as Buddy. He's been Buddy for years and years and years, ever since he was a little lad. Isn't that right, Buddy? Yes. The Golden Thought for today is short and powerful. Praying for someone is like wrapping them in a blanket of God's love. And you can do that and they don't even know it. You can pray for someone. Many a times people are prayed for and they have no idea. And then other times it's nice to know that they are being prayed for. Recently someone was in tears as they shared with me that a friend of theirs not only told them that they're praying for him, but they specifically asked, how can I pray for you? So if God leads you to ask someone, how can I pray for you? Or just to give them a pat on the back, I'm praying for you. Or just in the quietness of your own home, but they don't even know it. I'm praying for you. You're wrapping them in God's love. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've been blessed. We hope you've been inspired. Thank you, and God bless. Ain't that right, buddy? Yes, sir. You can shake my hand. All right, buddy. Shake my hand. That's good. That's good. <laughs>